let's talk about abstraction because I think there might be a little bit of a trend starting to vilify abstraction fundamentally, which is pretty silly because most everybody is not writing an assembly, so they're dealing with some kind of level of, of abstraction. And so the argument is not really that there shouldn't be any abstraction. It's that the abstraction that we are using ought to be exactly at the level I'm comfortable with, me personally. Uh, and if there's another layer, layer of abstraction that might help you, I don't want to use that because I don't understand that. It's too complex. It seems more complicated than the layer I'm comfortable with, so let's just use this one. It's simpler. The term simple gets thrown around a lot. Uh, so let's define abstraction fundamentally as various forms of code reuse. So if I have something that I want to accomplish, and I'm going to say I've got five steps to do it. One, two, three, four, five. And... Uh, I don't want to go around and do this over and over again. So fortunately, we have a nice little feature called functions that we can use to define something. And now I can do A as many times as I want. And, you know, A equals do one, two, three, four, or five. So now I can do A as many times as I want. Uh, and it has two main benefits. And I would say one main downside. The main benefit of code reuse like this is that I can write very quickly, I can repeat myself over and over again without having to really repeat myself, right? A, A, A. I can even write a for loop to do A over and over again. I can even write a B and say that B is going to be do A a hundred times. And now I just hit B and pff, wow, how much work did I just save? That's amazing, right? So that's the main benefit. Uh, another benefit, though, is in all 100 times it does that, or I have A in various places in my code base, you know, go to different areas of code, and A is littered throughout. But I decide that I want 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to change, and I need to add another step, or I need to modify, you know, an existing step. Now, by changing it in the function definition, I've changed it everywhere. So that's a really useful thing. I do not need to find everywhere it's defined. That's probably the primary use of abstraction in terms of maintainability is to be able to change your code so that it's not really in concrete, but you can make changes to it that propagate throughout the whole thing. And I don't need to go visit a lot of different locations in order to make that change happen. The main downside though, is if I wanna do something slightly different from A, in a few of the cases where it seems like A would be appropriate, then I kind of need to pick one of two different options. I either need to make a new function, five, six, you know, it's going to be, uh, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, and a 5.1 and a 7.2 or whatever. We're going to do a few different steps here that are a little different from A, but actually a lot of the steps are going to be the same. So we're going to say one through five here, exactly the same. But now, in some places I put A, in some places I put B, and now I want to go back and change how 2 works. Well, I don't want to forget uh, that I need to go back and change it in A as well, because if I do forget, then I'm going to have bugs and things are going to be broken. So when you introduce this, what you need to do is make sure that, you know, you take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you turn that into something else, and we'll do X, and we'll go, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now A is going to be X and 6, and then B is going to be X and that, and so now we've got it slightly different, A and B. The other way that you can approach that, of course, is you can have them be the same thing, and you can pass in some, uh, you know, let's say we're going to have that be G, we're going to have this is going to be, um, you can pass in X, and if X is one thing, then we're going to do G and another thing, and if X is something else, then we're going to do G and another thing, and whatever. But basically, we pass in parameters. All right, I'm trying to do some weird form of pseudocode. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm trying to do some weird form of pseudocode here, but the point is that the other way of going, rather than writing multiple functions, is to parameterize my function, accept arguments, and branch and do different things, right? And that's totally fine. Um, so now we have code reuse, and I'm going to actually come up into a example scenario where I've got a schema that I'm working with, and I've got users, and I want to do some stuff with these users. 
uh, I want to get all the ones that are admin. So I'm going to write a function, and I'm in JavaScript now, so I've got all these nice things like filter, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to say, well, I want all of the ones where admin is true. I can see in my schema admin is true on some of them, admin is false on some of them. It's a Boolean property. I can just check if it's true. I get all my admin users. Awesome. Uh, and then I want to do some more stuff. I want to also get the non-admin users. I'm going to write another function, and it's just going to check and see if they're false. All right, so that makes sense. And I can use these two functions throughout my code whenever I want to do that. And now I want to do even more stuff. I want to go through this and I want to add a property to it. I'm going to call it onboarded. Uh, just say you've got a bunch of admin users. You want to mark them with a new property. So I'm going to go through. I'm going to do a map and return a new array. And I'm going to check and see if admin is true. And then I'm going to set a new property. And if it's not, I'm going to return a regular user, et cetera, et cetera. Implementation, not a big deal. But the point is that I have code being fundamentally reused. I've got user.admin, in this case, triple equals true. I'm checking that that value is true in multiple places. And in another place, I'm doing something like we talked about slightly differently. This is, you know, A is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. B is 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. It's slightly different, right? Uh, but it kind of is the same thing. So what are we going to do? We're going to keep on writing this over and over again. What issue are we going to run into with that? If anybody wants to make a guess. The main issue we run into with that is not that we have to type this over and over again, because that's not a big deal. This is very easy to type. The problem is going to be that, oh, no, our schema changed. And now there is no admin property. And this is three functions, but let's say I wrote 100 different functions that are all doing things with the users, and they all have this user admin, admin equals true in there. And now I need to change that. This is not sufficient to know whether user is an admin anymore. I need to look through their roles. I need to pick out a role, go to the roles array, find that role. Is that an admin role? Yes. Well, what if they have more than one role? What if they're a crew and a manager? Is that person an admin? Well, yes, they are because they have one admin role. So we need to walk through. And if any of the admin roles, any of the roles on the user comes back as an admin, then the whole user is an admin. There's a lot of logic. There's a lot of complexity that just got introduced. You know, I mean, when we're talking about like big, big code base complexity, this is not that complex. But compared to what we were just dealing with, this is much more complex. And this is an important point about simplicity and complexity. This is more complex because the schema changed, presumably because we have a new feature requirement. We need to be able to support roles and users. We can't go, have it be the way it was before for the sake of simplicity. We have to implement this. So there is a minimum level of complexity we're going to have to get to. Uh, let's see. You can't actually see all this down here. So let me pull this up. But all this stuff that we had before is all broken now. We can't use this anymore. Okay. How do we fix this? Well, we have to implement that logic here and here, but slightly differently because it's false. So actually, logic is going to be a little different. And here. And if we have a bunch more, we got to do it all over the place there. Suddenly, we realize we should probably be doing code reuse. We should probably have made that a function. So let's go and do that. Let's make that. I've collapsed users and roles here. Let's make that a function. And this is just going to return if a single user is an administrator. And it's going to do all the logic in there. And now we have filter on is user and admin. We can't really reverse that. So we're going to have to like put it out you know, explicitly with a little lambda function here of not is user and admin, just reverse it for get non-admin users. Same thing here. We're going to set our property, but we're going to use is user admin. So here's the cool thing about this. If the requirements change on the schema at any point in the future as to how do we know if a user is an administrator, that's the only place that we're going to make a change. All right, so this is abstraction because we're not taking that logic and putting it everywhere. This is a level of abstraction because we should be able to collapse all of these. And when you come in as a dev and want to implement features, you should be using these. That's the abstraction. So what actually happens is somebody comes in and says, you know, we're uh, back here at this point where we still have the old schema. Somebody comes in here and says, I can tell what's going on here. I can tell that that's how an admin is declared. I need to write a new function. So let me just do that. And I'm going to do user dot admin. And I just might leave it like that, equals true, whatever, logically, same thing. I'm, that's going to be my check to see if a user is an admin everywhere I write stuff, because that's what makes sense to me. There might already even be 
an is user admin function that's supposed to do this functionality. But me, when I look at it, if I'm looking at this old schema, that looks really simple. So I don't want that abstraction because I just want to do my user.admin equals true. Why would I go and try to use this function if this is as simple as the logic is? So if we had tried to abstract this out before the schema got complicated, we would have the problem of developers not knowing that we had that uh, is user admin and just not using it. Either not knowing we had it and not using it or knowing we had it, wondering what's the point and just not using it. This is way simpler. And then the schema changes, of course, and then we get, you know, we got to do roles and stuff. And now we've got some things that are using the nice method that controls that logic. And now we got a bunch of places that aren't. And we got to go check it all. So the problem we really have when it comes to simplicity versus complexity is not a matter of fundamentally the logic is too complex. This right here, we have to do this. If the scheme is going to be this, if the feature is going to be users need to support roles, roles need to be able to be admins, right? This can even change big time. You can get permission strings and stuff in here. This kind of logic can get way more complex without it having to be a big deal. Just, hey, this other website can do this with permission strings. Can I do that too? Okay, what's that going to take in this code base? One change to one function, hopefully. But we might have a bunch of places where the old user.admin or maybe somebody even said, I can tell from the schema how I need to implement this and they rewrite that. And they might rewrite it slightly differently too. They might rewrite it where it, it, it's actually got a bug in it and now we got to track that bug down. So why aren't they just using it? Well, there's one main reason why a new developer is going to come into a code base and you've made this nice little framework for them to use. By the way, you are creating a framework when you're working on a code base and creating any kind of abstraction. You're using Vue, you're using React, you've got those as frameworks. You're building your own framework on top of that all the time. Unless you're doing zero abstraction, which is pretty impressive if you can actually pull that off because you're going to run into the issue of just you're writing everything over and over again, you're going to run into these problems. If you hit the point where you're complex enough, uh, uh, spoilers, if you hit the point where you're complex enough that you need to do code reuse at all, then you're creating your own framework and somebody else has got to come into that. And when they come into that, what are they going to do? Are they going to use it? Well, you want them to use it because it's going to make their lives easier. It's going to make maintaining easier. It's going to speed up development. So why would they come in and not use it? When it seems simple enough to approach without using it and when you don't really know it's there or you don't know how to use it, then you're gonna avoid it. So knowing that it's there and knowing how to use it is kind of the big important point here. How am I gonna know it's there? We need an organizational policy with all of the contributors to this code base that there's documentation somewhere. And I can go to that documentation and it's not just how to set up the project and it's not just a general description of how things work. Uh, and probably it's not just, uh, a, a, like an appendix of all of the functions and how they work, but actual like code examples of how to use stuff, a human being writing some stuff in there saying, here's how to use this, but not also not just in the comments, but somewhere that is findable, right? Somewhere that I know to go to when I want to know how to use this code base. Uh, documentation site generator, something that looks nice and feels good to use and something that I know to look for. So when I come in here, I don't see, oh, here's the schema. I know how to tell if a user is an admin. I'm going to do this thing. You know, my instinct going to a new code base is I try to find whatever the function is that exists for doing that and use it. There could be more than one already in there. Somebody else could have re-implemented this and now there's more than one and they do mostly the same thing, maybe slightly different things. And I don't know which one to use. That needs to be refactored, but does it because maybe they are supposed to be used in slightly different use cases. I can't really tell just by looking at the code and there's no comments and there's no documentation. So I'll just write my own or I'll use one. I'll pick one. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing because we didn't document. I've had people go in and I had all this nice code set up. I thought it was a good abstraction. It's going to 
It's going to take care of a lot of stuff automatically that nobody needs to worry about going forward. All the developers can come in and just implement their features, use the methods that I created, and they'll be able to be uber productive. And somebody comes in and overwrites the whole thing with something where now developers are actually going to need to do more work. And why did they choose to do that? Because they looked at my abstraction that I made and they didn't get it because it only made sense to me. And they said, this is too complex. Simplify. Get rid of it. Have everybody just write it out. So now it's better because it's simpler, and now it's worse because we have more code uh, repetition. It's not dry code anymore. What could have prevented that? What could have had my code stay there and get used and actually contribute to productivity somehow if I had documented it in such a way that when a new dev came to look at it, they could see it and know exactly how to use it and not have to scan through and figure it out? but I would have had something written in English that they could look at and learn. And also that on the team, we had agreed upon a place where everybody will go to look at that documentation, to look for that documentation and find it. Because if I don't know where to go to look for the documentation, then it doesn't even matter if it exists. I'm never going to find it. Uh, I, I also implemented this here in a nice little thing called Ramda. You can pull this in and then you can re code reuse all over the place. Does this look simple to anybody? This is actually really maintainable, really solid, a lot of code reuse, very unit testable. Uh, it's, it's using functional programming paradigms. I don't think anyone that I work with would look at this and want to use this at all. Uh, and would probably have very little idea of what's going on here. I had to look a lot of stuff up just to implement this. If I saw this, I would probably feel uncomfortable with it, and I wrote it. So how would I possibly choose to use it if the details of how it works are so abstracted away from me that I feel uncomfortable? I would need really solid documentation because I don't know how Vue works. I don't know how React works under the hood. I know the principles of it, but I, I don't know the code base. I've never looked through the Vue source code sufficiently to understand from looking at the code how something works. I read the documentation. We all do. That's how we're working on top of that framework. And if you're going to construct a framework, which you are, if you're working in a code base and you're creating any kind of abstraction, you're building a framework, a framework for that project. If you ever worked in C++, they're basically building a new language for every project. And how are you possibly going to enjoy using that or be able to use that without rewriting your own stuff? It's got to be documented somewhere. So the solution to this is not to avoid doing any abstraction. It's to make sure that you have some solid documentation.